Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my YouTube channel Diversity of Plant Zone. Before starting my today's video, I request you all to please subscribe my YouTube channel. Today's topic of my video is about introduction to Sir Joseph Dalton Hooker, British botanist. So let's start the video. Joseph Dalton Hooker Sir Joseph Dalton Hooker, born on the 30th of June 1817 and died on the 10th of December 1911. He was a British botanist and explorer in the 19th century. He was a founder of geographical botany and Charles Darwin's closest friend. For 20 years, he served as a director of the Royal Botanical Gardens, Kew, succeeding his father, William Jackson Hooker, and was awarded the highest honors of British science. Joseph Dalton Hooker Sir Joseph Dalton Hooker, born on 30th of June 1817 and dead on the 10th of December 1911. Biography. He was born on the 30th of June, 1817, Hales, Worth, Suffolk, United Kingdom, and dead on the 10th of December, 1911, at the age of 94, Sunningdale, Baksha, United Kingdom, nationality, British. Alma Mater, Glasgow University, Awards, Clark Medal, 1885, Coupley Medal, 1887, Lenin Medal, 1888, Darwin Medal, 1892, Order of Merit, 1907, Darwin Wallis Medal, 1908. Scientific career includes the fields like botany, institutions, kew gardens. Influences George Bantam, Charles Darwin, William Jackson Hooker, influenced William Tisselton Dyer. Author abbreviation botany is Hook F. Biography also include his signature as shown in the figure. Now I am going to discuss about his early years. Hooker was born in Hillsworth, Suffolk, England. He was the second son of the famous botanist Sir William Jackson Hooker. Regius, professor of botany and Maria Sarah Turner eldest daughter of the banker Dawson Francis Palgrave. From the age seven, Hooker attended his father's lectures at Glasgow University, taking an early interest in plant distribution and the voyages of the explorer like Captain James Cook. He was educated at the Glasgow High School and went on to study medicine at Glasgow University, graduating MD in 1839. This degree qualified him from employment in Naval Medical Service. He joined the renowned polar explorer Captain James Clark Ross. Antarctic expedition to the South Magnetic Pole after receiving a commission as assistant surgeon on HMS Erebus. On this expedition, Hooker was grateful for access to the private library of Richard Clement Moody, then governor of the Falkland. Islands Hooker described the, the library as excellent and developed a close friendship with Moody. 
Next, I'm going to discuss about his marriages and children. In 1851, he married to the Frances Harriet Henslow. 1825 to 1874, daughter of the Darwin's mentor, John Stevens Henslow. They had four sons and three daughters, which include William Henslow Hooker, 1853 to 1942 Harriet N. Hooker 1854 to 1945 married with William Turner to Sultan Dyer Charles Paget Hooker 1855 to 1933 Maria Elizabeth Hooker, 1857 to 1863, died aged six. Brian Harvey Hudson Hooker, 1860 to 1932. Reginald Horton Hooker, 1867 to 1944. Statistician. Grace Ellen Hooker, 1868-1955, Francis Harriet Henslow's contribution to his work included translating French botanical texts which Hooker edited after his first wife's death in 1874 and in 1876 he married Lady Hyacinth. Jardine, 1842-1921 Daughter of William Samuel Sammons and widow of the Sir William Jardine. They had two sons, Joseph Sammons Hooker, 1877-1940 Richard Sammons Hooker, 1885-1950. Lady Hooker was elected a fellow of the RSPB in 1905. Joseph Dalton Hooker, type of Hooker by William Edward Kilburn. Shocker. 1852 as shown in the figure next i'm going to discuss about his sons willie and brian who regularly corresponded with the chief government scientist in new zealand sir james hector he sent his son willie aged 15 to stay in new zealand with the recently married hector in 1869 Willie was sicky and coughing up blood and a warmer climate was recommended. Though well behaved, he was indolent. Hector sent him on a cruise on a government steamer, the Stuart, with a son also 15 of Colonel. Halting, the defense minister, Miss Hector, treated him like a younger brother. After eight months and in better health, Hector sent him home to England, saying he had greatly improved. His father was grateful and surprised when Willie passed the civil service examination. He got an administrative job in the India office and lived to 89. But his son, Brian, was a great worry to him. He qualified as a geologist and mining engineer at the Royal School of Mines, but unable to get a job in Britain. Emigrated to Australia where he married. He resigned a Queensland lectureship to invest with his brother Willie in an impressively named but cash-strapped gold mining company which collapsed. collapsed. The Queensland Minerals Exploration Company, Joseph, was appalled. Brian could not support his wife and children or find employment. 
In 1891, Hector sent a pessimistic report on the proposed tin mine on Stewart Island and saw Brian in 1892 and 1893 after he left his family in Australia. But Hector was no longer involved with mining in New Zealand under the new Liberal government. Brian returned to his family in Australia in 1894. Joseph Dalton Hooker, Francis Harriet Hanslow by William Edward Kilburn as shown in the figure. Next I am going to discuss about his death and burial. Joseph Hooker died in his sleep at midnight at home. The camp Sunningdale in Buckshire on 10th of December 1911 after a short and apparently minor illness. The Dean and Chapter of Westminster Abbey offered a grave near Darwin's in the nave but also insisted that Hooker be cremated before. His widow Hyacinth declined the proposal and eventually Hooker's body was buried as he wished to be alongside his father in the churchyard of the St. Anne's Church, Q on Q Green, within short distance of Q Gardens. His memorial tablet in the church with a motif of five plants was designed by Mutilda Smith. Next I am going to discuss about his work which includes Voyage to Antarctic 1839-1843. Hooker's first expedition followed by James Clark Ross consisted of two ships. First is HMS Erebus and HMS Terror. It was the last major voyage of the exploration made entirely under sail. Hooker was the youngest of the 128 men crew. Voyage to the Antarctic 1839-1843. He sailed on the Erebus and was assistant to Robert McCumick who in addition to being the ship's surgeon was instructed to collect zoological and geological specimens. The ship sailed on the 30th September 1839. Before journeying to Antarctica, they visited Madeira, Tenerife, Santiago, and QL Islands in the Cap Ward Archipelago St. Paul Rocks Trinity Trinity Trinidad East of Brazil and St. Helena and the Cap of the Good Hope. Hooker made plant collections at each location and while traveling drew these and specimens of algae and sea life pulled abroad using toenets. From the Cap they entered the Southern Ocean. Their first stop was the Cruzit. Islands were they set down on possession island to deliver coffee to sailors. They departed for the Kerguelen Islands where they would spend several days. Hooker identified 18 flowering plants, 35 mosses and liverworts, 25 lichens and 51 algae, including some that were not described by the surgeon William Anderson. When James Cook and he had visited the islands in, 18, in 1772, the expedition spent some time in Hobart when when Diamonds land and then moved on to the 
Auckland Islands and Campbell Island and onward to Antarctica to locate the South Magnetic Pole. After spending five months in the Antarctic, they returned to resupply in Hobart, then went to the Sydney and the Bay of Islands in New Zealand from 18th August to 19th. To 23rd of November 1841, they left New Zealand to return to Antarctica after spending 138 days at sea and a clean between the Erebus and Terror. They sailed to the Falkland Islands to Tierra, Tierra del Fuego, back to the Falkland and onward to their third salty into the Antarctic. When Hooker arrived on the Falkland Islands with the expedition of Ross, he developed a close friendship with Richard Clement Moody, the governor of the Falkland Islands. Moody granted Hooker full use of his personal library, which Hooker described as excellent and Hooker described Moody as a very active and intelligent young man, most anxious to improve the colony and gain every information sick respecting its products. Subsequently, the Rose expedition made a landing at Cookburn Island of the Antarctic Peninsula and after leaving the Antarctic, stopped at the Cap. St. Helena and Ascension Island. The ships arrived back in England on the 4th of September 1843. The voyage had been a success for Rose as it was the first to confirm the existence of the southern continent and chart much of its coastline. Next is the Geological Survey of the Great Britain. In 1845, Hooker applied for the Chair of Botany at the University of Edinburgh. This position included duties at the Royal Botanic Gardens of the Scotland and also, and so the appointment was influenced by the local politicians, an unusually protracted struggle ensued, resulting in the election of the locally born and bred botanist John Hutton Balfour. The Darwin correspondence now public makes clear Darwin's sense of shock at this unexpected outcome. Hooker declined a chair at Glasgow University which became vacant on Balfour's appointment. Instead, he took a position as botanist to the Geological Survey of Great Britain in 1846. He began work on the paleontological, paleontology, paleobotany, searching for the fossil plants in the coal beds of the whales, eventually discovering the first coal ball in 1855. He became engaged to Francis. Hanslaw, daughter of the Charles Darwin Sportney, tutor John Stevens Hanslow, but he was keen to continue to travel and gain more experience in the field. He wanted to travel to India and Himalayas. Himalayas. In 1847, his father nominated him to travel to India and collect plants for Q. In 2011, a collection of glass plate slides of paleontological fossils, some prepared by Darwin, William, Nicole, and others, which had been lost following Hooker's brief tenure with the survey, were rediscovered in the survey wards in Keyworth in Nottinghamshire and they shed light in the international breadth of the English scientific research in the first half of the 19th century. Next I'm going to discuss about the voyage to the Himalayas, Himalayas and subcontinent in 1847 to 1851.
On 11th November 1847, Hooker left England for the three-year-long Himalayan expedition. This was just 10 days after being granted two and a half years leave from the Geological Survey to study fossil plants in India and Borneo on behalf of Q and the Admiralty. He would be the first European to collect plants in the Himalaya, but abandoned the projected visit to Lubuan. He received a free passage on HMS Sedan to the Nile and then travelled overland to Suez, where he boarded a ship to India. He arrived in Calcutta on the 12th of January 1848, leaving on 28 to begin his travels with a geological survey party under Mr. Williams, who he left on the 3rd March to continue traveling by elephant to New Zippur, up to the Ganges by boat to the Choliguri and overland by Pune to Darjeeling, arriving on 16th April 1848. Hooker's expedition was based in Darjeeling where he stayed with the naturalist Brian Hodgson. Horton Hudson. Through Hudson, he met British East India Company representative Archibald Campbell, who negotiated Hooker's admission to the Sikkim, which was finally approved in 1849. He was later briefly taken prisoner by the Raja of the Sikkim. Meanwhile, Hooker wrote to Darwin, relying to him the habits of animals in India and collected plants in. Bengal. He explored with the local resident Charles Barnes, then traveled along the great Ranjit River to its junction with the Tista River and Tonglu Mountain in the Singalela Range on the border with Nepal. Hooker and a sizable party of local assistants departed for eastern Nepal on the 27th of October 1848. They traveled to the Zongri west toward the spots of Kanchenjunga and northwest along Nepal's passes into Tibet. In April 1849, he planned a longer expedition into Sikkim. Leaving on 3rd May, he traveled northwest of the Lachin Valley to the Kongra Lama Pass and then to the and then to the Lachung Pass. Campbell and Hooker were imprisoned by the Darwin of the Sikkim as they traveled towards the Chola in Tibet. A British team was sent to negotiate with the king of the Sikkim. However, they were released without any bloodshed and Hooker returned to the Darjeeling where he spent January and February 1850 writing his journals replacing specimens lost during his detention and planning a journey for his last year in India according to an 1887 journal written by the Indian administrator Richard Temple many of the rhododendrons found in English gardens of the time were grown from seeds collected by Hooker in Sikkim reluctant to return to Sikkim and unenthusiastic about traveling in Bhutan, he chose to make his last Himalayan expedition to Solit and the Hasi hills in Assam. He was accompanied by the Thomas Thompson, a fellow student from the Glasgow University. They left the Darjeeling on the 1st May 1850, then sailed to the Bay of Bengal and traveled overland by elephant to the Khasi Hills and established a headquarters for their studies in Chura, where they stayed until 9th of December when they began their trip back to England. Hooker's survey of 
Her tattoo. Her tattoo. Unexplored Regions, the Himalayan journals dedicated to Charles Darwin, was published by the Calcutta. Trigonometrical. Trigonometrical Survey Office in 1854, abbreviated again in 1855 and later by the Munawa, Library of Famous Books published by the Ward, Locke, Budan, and Co. in 1891. When Hooker returned to England, his father, who had been appointed director of the Royal Botanic Gardens Kew in 1841, was now a prominent man of science. William Hooker, through his connections, cured an admiralty grant of the Euro 1000 to Daffray, the cost of players for his son Bortney of the Antarctic voyages, and an annual stipend of the Euro 200 for Joseph while he worked on the flora. Hooker's flora was also to include that collected on the voyages of Quick. Cook and Menzies, held by the British Museum, and collections made on the Beagle. The floras were illustrated by the Walter Hood Fitch, trained in botanical illustration by William Hooker, who would go on to become the most prolific Victorian botanical artist. Hooker's collection from the Antarctic voyage were described eventually in one of two volumes published as the Flora Antarctica, 1844-47. In the Flora, he wrote about islands and their roles in plant geography. The work made Hooker's reputation as the systematist and plant geographer. His works on the voyage were completed with Flora, Novae, Zealandiae, 1851-53, and Flora, Tasmania, 1853 to 59. Voice to the Himalayas and subcontinent, 1847 to 1851. Tibet and Cholamo, lake from the summit of the Dunkya Pass, looking northwest from the Hooker's Himalayan journals. Hooker reached the pass on the 7th of November, 1849, as shown in the figure. Voyage to the Himalayas and Subcontinent 1847-1851 Rhododendron Argentum Illustration by Walter Hood Fitch from the Rhododendrons of Sikkim, Himalaya Voyage to the Himalayas and Subcontinent 1847-51 and 1854 Illustration showing Hooker with his lecture collections in Sikkim Mexitant by William Walker after a painting by Frank Stone as shown in the figure. Next I am going to discuss about voyage to Palestine in 1860. This trip was taken in atom of the 1860 with the Daniel Hanbury. They visited and collected in Syria and Palestine no full length report was published but a number of papers were written. Hooker recognized three Phytogeographical deviance Western Syria and Palestine, Eastern Syria and Palestine, Middle and Upper Mountain regions of Syria. Next is Voyage to Morocco, 1871. Hooker visited Morocco from the April to June, 1871, in the company of John Ball, George Ma and a young gardener from Kew called Crump. Voyage to Western United States, 1877. This was undertaken with his friend Asa Gray and leading American botanist of the day. They wished to investigate the connection between the floras of Eastern United States and those of Eastern Continental Asia and Japan and the line of the demarcation between the Arctic floras of America and Greenland. As probable causes, they, dis they considered the glacial periods and an earlier land connection with the Arctic continent. A difficult question was why in the great mountain chains of the western United States 
there appear to be only a few botanical enclaves of plants of eastern asiatic affinities among plants of the mexican and more southern types Hooker visited a number of cities and botanical institutions before moving west and climbing to 9,000 feet to camp at La Vita. From Fort Garland, they climbed the they climbed the Sierra Blanca at 14,500 feet. After returning to La Vita, they went beyond to the Colorado Springs to Pikes Peak next to Denver and Salt Lake City of an excursion into the was such range. A journey of 29 hours took them to Reno and Carson City, then Silver City and 10 days by the wagon across the Sierra Nevada. Thus they came to the Yosama Yosemite and Calaveras group and entered up in San Francisco. Hooker was back in queue with 1,000 dried specimens by October. His comments on the encounters include the following. After meeting and talking to the Brigham young whom he described a respectable and well-spoken all the school children are brought up to believe in him, Brigham Young, and in a lot of the scripture history as useless and idle as they are taught in our schools. Of Georgetown, the fingertip of the civilization where the people sleep without locks to their doors and fire engines are well managed, and in capital order there is no end of food. The New Englanders are most like us in language, speech, and habits. The Americans are great and promiscuous, promiscuous eaters. Beds are remarkably clean and good, but the pillows are too soft. His views on the flora of the Colorado and Utah. There are two temperate and two cold mountain floras, which first is a prairie flora derived from the eastward, second a so-called desert and saline flora derived from the west, third a subalpine or alpine, fourth an alpine flora and two later of widely different origin and one in sense proper to the Rocky Mountain ranges. His overview of North American flora contained these elements polar area from the Bering Strait to Greenland, British North American flora, south of the Arctic flora in five meridional belts, United States flora in belts. The Great Eastern Forest region from the Atlantic to beyond the Mississippi, Mississippi, the Prairie region, the Sink region confined to gullies of the mountains, the Sierra, Nevada. Next I am going to discuss about Darwin and evolution. While on the Erebus, Hooker had read the proofs of Charles Darwin's voyage of the Beagle, provided by the Charles Lear, and had been very impressed by the Darwin's skill as a naturalist. They had met once before the Antarctic voyage embarked. After Hooker's return to England, he was approached by Darwin, who invited him to classify plants that Darwin had collected in the South America and the Galapagos Islands, Hooker agreed, and the pair began a lifelong friendship. On 11th January 1844, Darwin mentioned to Hooker his early ideas on the 
transportation of species and natural selection and Hooker showed interest. In 1847 he agreed to read Darwin's essay explaining the theory and responded with notes given Darwin's claim critical feedback. Their correspondence continued throughout the development of Darwin's theory and in 1858 Darwin wrote that Hooker was the one living soul from whom I have constantly received sympathy. Freeman, 1978, wrote Hooker was Charles Darwin's greatest friend and confidant. Certainly they had extensive correspondence and they also face, met face to face Hooker visiting Darwin. Hooker and Lyle were the two people Darwin consulted. By later, when Alfred Russell Wallace, famous letter right at Down House, enclosing his paper on natural selection. Hooker was instrumental in creating the device whereby the Wallace paper was accompanied by Darwin's notes and his letter to S. Gray showing his prior realization of natural selection in a presentation to the Linnean Society. Hooker was the one who formally presented this material to the Linnean Society meeting in 1858. In 1859, the author of The Origin of Species recorded his indebtedness to Hooker's wide knowledge and balanced judgment. In December 1859, Hooker published the introductory essay to the Flora Tasmania. In the final part of the botany of the Antarctic voyage, it was in this essay which appeared just one month after the publication of Charles Darwin's On the Origin of Species that Hooker announced his support for the theory of evolution by natural selection thus becoming the first recognized man of the science to publicly back Darwin. At the historic debate on evolution held at the Oxford University Museum on 30th of June 1860, Bishop Samuel Wilberforce, Benjamin Brody, and Robert Fitzroy. Fitzroy spoke against Darwin's theory, and Hooker and Thomas Henry Huxley defended it. According to Hooker's own account, it was he and not Huxley who delivered the most effective reply to the well before arguments, Hooker acted as president of the British Association at its Norwich meeting of 1868, when his address was remarkable for its championship of Darwinian theories. He was a close friend of the Thomas Henry Huxley, a member of the X Club which dominated the Royal Society in the 1870s and early 1880s and first of the three ex-clubbers in succession to become the president of the Royal Society. In 1862, he was elected a foreign member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. Joseph Dalton Hooker, engraving of Hooker by Charles Henry Jeans, 1827-1879, as shown in the figure. Next, I am going to discuss about Royal Botanic Gardens Q. By his travels and his publications, Hooker built up a high scientific reputation at home. In 1855, he was appointed assistant director of the Royal Botanic Gardens, Kew, and in 1865, he succeeded his father as full director holding the post for 20 years. Under the directorship of father and son, Hooker, the Royal Botanic Gardens of Kew rose to world renown at the age of 30. Hooker was elected a fellow of the Royal Society and in 1873 he was chosen its president till 1877. He received three of its medals, the Royal Medal in 1854, the Copley in 1887 and the Darwin Medal in 1892. He continued to interspose work at Kew with foreign exploration and collecting. His journeys to Palestine, Morocco, and the United States all produced valuable information and specimens for Q. He started the series Flora Indica in 1855 together with the Thompson, Thomas Thompson, 
their botanical observation and the publication of the rhododendrons of Sikkim, Himalaya, 1849-51, formed the basis of elaborate works on the rhododendrons of Sikkim, Himalaya and on the flora of India. His works were illustrated with lithographs by Walter Hood Fitch. His greatest botanical work was The Flora of British India, published in seven volumes starting in 1872. On the publication of the last part in 1897, he was promoted Knight Grant, Commander of the Order of the Star, being made a Knight Commander of that order in 1877. Ten years later, on attaining the age of 90 in 1907, he was awarded the Order of Merit. He was the author of numerous scientific papers and monographs and his larger books included in addition to those already mentioned, a standard student's flora of British IELTS and a monumental work, the genera plantrum 1860-83 based on the collections at Kew, in which he had the assistance of George Bentham. His collaboration with George Bentham was especially important. Bentham and Amata, botanist who worked at the Kew for many years, was perhaps the leading botanical systematist of the 19th century. The Handbook of the British Flora, begun by Bentham and completed by Hooker, was the standard text for the hundred years it was always known as the Bentham and Hooker. In 1904, the age of 87, Hooker published a sketch of the vegetation of the Indian Empire. He continued the compilation of his father Sir William Jackson Hooker's project. Icons, plant from illustration of plants, producing volumes 11 through 19, with most of the illustrations being prepared for him by the Matilda Smith. Joseph Dalton Hooker, Hooker in the 1860s, during his period at Q, as shown in the figure. Next, I'm going to discuss about the attacks on Hooker and on the Q. The herbarium at Q was founded in 1853 and quickly grew in size and importance. At the time, Richard Owen was the superintendent of the natural history departments of the British Museum, reporting only to the head of British Museum. Hooker, appointed in 1855 as assistant director of Kew, was the man most responsible for bringing foreign specimens to Kew. There is no doubt that rivalry resulted between the British Museum, where there was a very important herbarium of the Department of Botany and Kew. The Rivalry at times became extremely personal, especially between Joseph Hooker and Owen. At the root was Owen's feeling that Q should be subordinate to British Museum and to Owen and should not be allowed to develop as an independent scientific institution with the advantage of Great Botanic Garden. The relationship between the two men continued to deteriorate. Deteriorate. After Hookers became a supporter of Darwin's view and a member of the X Club, who set out to get their way with the Royal Society. In 1868, Hooker had proposed that the whole of the huge herbarium collection of Johnson Banks should be moved from the British Museum to Kew, a reasonable idea, but a threat to Owen's plans for a museum in South. Consenton to house the natural history collections. Hooker cited mismanagement at the British Museum as a justification after Joseph had succeeded his father as director in 1865. The independence of Q was seriously threatened by the machinations, machinations of the Member of Parliament, Acton. Me Ayrton, whose appointment as first commissioner of works by the Gladstone in 1869 was greeted in the Times with the prophecy that it would approve, it would prove another instance of Mr. Ayrton's unfortunate tendency to carry out what he thinks right in as unpleasant a manner as possible. 
This was relevant because Q was funded by the Board of Works and the director of Q reported to the first commissioner. The conflict between the two men lasted from 1870 to 1872 and there is a voluminous, voluminous correspondence on the Ayrton episode held at Q. Ayrton believed in an extraordinary way, interfering in matters and approaching Hooker's colleagues behind his back, apparently with the aim of getting Hooker to resign when the expenditure in Q on Q could be curtailed and diverted. Ayrton actually took staff appointments out of Hooker's hand. He seemed not to value the scientific work and to believe Q should be just an amusement park. Hooker wrote, My life has become utterly detestable and I do long to throw up the directorship. What can be more humiliating, humiliating than the two years of wrangling with a such a creature. Hooker to Bantam, 2nd of February 1872 in Huxley, 1918, page number 165, chapter 35. The Ayrton episode, finally Hooker asked to be put in communication with the Gladstone private secretary Algernon West. A statement was drawn up over the signatures of Darwin's Lyre, Huxley, and Tinder, Bantam, and others. It was laid before the Parliament by John Lovick, and additional papers laid before the House of Lords. Lord Derby called for all the correspondence on this matter. D. Treasury supported Hooker and criticized Ayrton's behavior. One extraordinary fact emerged. There had been an official report on Q, which had not previously been seen in public, which Ayrton has caused this to be written by Richard Owen. Hooker had not seen the report and so had not been given right of reply. Nonetheless, nonetheless, this report was amongst the paper laid before the parliament and it contained an attack on both the hookers and suggested amongst which, amongst much else, they had, that they had mismanaged the care of their trees and that their systematic approach to botany was nothing more than attaching barbarous binomials to foreign weeds. The discovery of this report no doubt helped to sway opinion in favor of Hooker and Q. There was a debate in the press as well as in the parliament. Hooker replied to Owen's report in a point-by-point -point factual manner and his reply placed with the other papers on the case. When Ayrton was questioned about it in the debate laid by the Lubbock, they replied that Hooker was too low and official to raise questions of matter with the Minister of the Crown. The outcome was not a vote in the Commons but a kind of, kind of truce until in August 1874, Gladstone transferred Ayrton from the Board of Works to the Office of Judge Advocate Journal just before his government fell. Ayrton failed to get re-elected to Parliament. From that moment to this, the value of the Botanic Gardens has never been seriously questioned. In the midst of the crisis, Hooker was elected as President of the Royal Society in 1873. This showed publicly the high regard which Hooker's fellow scientists had for him and great importance they attached to his work. Josh Dalton Hooker, this is Sir Richard Owen opposed Hooker in his plan of expansion of Q. Photograph Ernest Edwards 
1867 as shown in the figure. Josh Dalton Hooker Oven was supported in Parliament by Acton Smee Ayrton Caracacho Caracacho Vanity Fair in 1869 as shown in the figure. Honors and Commemoration So next I'm going to discuss about his honors and commemoration in 1847 fellow of the Royal Society. In 1869, companion of the Order of the Bath. In 1869, election to the American Philosophical Society. In 1877, Knight Commander of the Order of the Star of India. 1873, President of the Royal Society. 1883 Founders Gold Medal of the Royal Geographical Society 1885 Foreign Member of the Royal Netherlands Academy of Arts and Sciences 1897 Knight Grand Commander of the Order of the Star of India 1902 Pauli Merit from the Kingdom of the Prussia, awarded by German Empire. 1907 Order of Merit, Hooker Ock in Chiku. Ock in Chiku, California was named after him. Hooker Island in France, Joseph Land was named after him. Following its 9, 1880 discovery. There, uh, next I'm going to discuss about the taxa named in honor. There are number, at least 30 plants with specific name Hukri and Hukriana. Many of them are named in honor of the Joss Dalton Hooker, including Banksia Hukriana. Next is Gravelia Hukriana. Gravelia Hukriana. Next is Iris Hukriana. Next is Polygonatum Hukri and next is Sarcococca Sarcococca Hukriana Land Snail Not a Discus Hukri Reef 1854 Sea Lion New Zealand of Hooker Sea Lion For Cactus for cactus, Hukri, Gray, 1884. 1880, Next, I'm going to discuss about his selected publications. 1844 to 1859, Flora, Antarctica, the bottom of the Antarctic voyage. Three volumes, 1844, January. 1853, New Zealand. 1859, Tasmania, Reeve, London. 1864 to 1867. Handbook of the New Zealand Flora, 1849, Niger Flora, 1849 to 1851, the Rhododendrons of Sikkim, Himalaya, 1854, Himalayan Journals or Notes of the Naturalist in Beagle, the Sikkim and Nepal, Himalayas, Khasiya Mountains, 1855, Illustrations of Himalayan Plants, 1855. Flora Antica with Thomas Thompson, 1858, Handbook of the British Flora, a description of the flowering plants and ferns indigenous to or naturalized in British Isle Elves for the use of the beginners and amateurs, and Reef, 1858, Bantam and Hooker. 1859, A Century of Indian Orchids, 1859, Introductory Essay to Flora of Australia, 1862 to 1883, Genera Plantum ad Exemplaria Imprimis in Harboris, Quensibus, Sovata, Definita, Primum, Cistens, Dicotyledonum, Polypatellarum, Ordens, L33. Next is Ranuncularias. 
Cornelius London Reeve and Co 1867 with the George Bentham 1862-1883 Genera Plantarum ad Exemplaria Imprimis in Herbarius Quensibus Sovata Definita in Latin Volume Secanti London Reeve and Company 1876 with George Bentham Next is 1870 to 1878 The Students Flora of the British Isles Isles Macmillan London 1872 to 18, 1997 The Flora of British Volume V Chino Podi ACI 2 Orchidae London L Reeve and Co 1890 ISBN 0913196290 Next is a general system of botany descriptive and analytical in two parts first is treaty treaty general de botanic trans francis harriet hooker london lumens green 1873 1867 with the emmanuel le mau 1898 to 1900 handbook to the salon Salon Flora Next is 1904 to 1906 This is an Apatomy Apatomy to the British Indian specimens of impatience So this is 1904 to 1906 and Apatomy to the british indian species of the impatiens next is the standard author abbreviation the standard author abbreviation which is also called hooker f is used to indicate this person as the author when citing a botanical name if you like my video please like and subscribe to my youtube channel Thanks for watching. Thanks for your appreciation. Thank you so much.